Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of FSI's NASCAR DFS Pick Show. I'm your host, TK Nation 47. That is Mega Roller 31. If you had just concluded the uh, Xfinity video, welcome back. And uh, now we are on to the cup video for the night race at Richmond Raceway. All right, stay with me here. We have the <laughs> Federated Auto Parts 400. Salute to the first responders here on 9 11. 400 laps, 300 miles, Richmond, Virginia, pole sitter Kyle Larson. Um, yeah, uh, we have probably the three best plays at the top here, all starting one, two, three, Mega. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to do here just to start us out with our roster construction. Well, after we did the cup video last week, I did some more research and I, I, I kept on hearing this over and over and over again. And, and looking at what happened last week, I'm starting to believe it might be true. Remember the children's book, the tortoise and the hare, got where it. like the rabbit got very far ahead and the tortoise, you know, just kind of went along its way. And then all of a sudden in the end, it catches up to him. Mm -hmm. It seems as if Joe Gibbs racing really didn't care about the regular season. And if you looked at it, Hamlin didn't have a win. Truex won early and kind of faded back. Kyle Busch was Kyle Busch. Um, Bell got a, I think he got a win early, but then mm -hmm. really was just kind of there. Everybody's saying that they got what they needed to do to qualify and kind of coasted through the summer. And they have put all the resources into studying and preparing for these last tracks in the playoffs. Hendricks. Okay head was just like you know pedal to metal straight through and really hasn't put the resources towards these end tracks they've been concentrating week to week and doing well and if you looked at it like larson dominated all those those races so last week look what happened to hendrix if it was a demolition derby hands down they won their cars were all torn up i know larson ended up winning at the end but no he? second Give yeah second Okay. Hamlin won. He he put it right. into the wall, tried to video game Hamlin on the outside, yeah. and he uh, came up short. Yeah. So, but anyways, he was like probably the best car out of all of it. Um, Truex keeps yeah, on was. shooting himself in the foot. Like Truex probably could have easily won that race, but he keeps on having errors with his pit crew or, or whatever during the race. So if he actually puts everything together, it could be very scary. I mean, he could run away with the championship. Especially here. Especially here. Yeah. So, but then, like, I'm looking at like Elliot and Byron, and um, I'm just wondering about these hundred cars. So, Larson is starting on the pole here, and yes, he could get out and clean air and everything. But Denny Hamlin being in the outside pole, Truex right behind him, Kurt Busch, I don't think is really a factor here. I don't know. I don't know if Larson is going to be the complete dominator here. I really like these Gibbs cars much better in Hamlin and Truex. And again, it's like, I think I'm going to lean on Hamlin just because he did win like last week. He's looking very strong and very good, has momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Truex, I like him as a play. My daughter will kill me for saying this, but I think that I'm not as high on him because he's got to stop making mistakes. Yeah. So where I'm going with this here is complete roster construction DFS wise. Uh, I completely agree with you on um, all the takes for, you know, the actual season and how the progress of the season has gone from a DFS standpoint here. I think you have to make a decision. You can take, you know, one or two of these guys here in this one, two, three, or just pick the one you think is going to dominate and then maybe make a lineup or two, you know, with the other guy, you know, agree. and then, or you could take two of the three and think that, okay, two of the three of these, two of the three, are going to dominate 400 laps. 400 laps is the biggest key here. A ton of laps led points to be had out there and fastest laps. Clean air at Richmond is typically in the front. Those are typically where the fastest laps are ran. So it's a total domination track. We've seen Truex, you know, completely destroy fields here. Um, I do like Denny Hamlin. He's one, this is like a hometown track for Denny as well. That is going to have to, they, I'm sure you're going to, or is that Martinsville? Either way, they're both in rich, uh, Virginia. So <laughs> whatever. All right. No, so, the bushes are yeah. Vegas. 
all right anyway but yeah i, I th- i'm with you on denny um my initial lean was larson uh but i we went over some you know track history a little bit and uh not too well at, um here at richmond in the uh, uh chip ganassi car days for cal larson um and he he could definitely you know i don't want to overthink larson before i start even thinking about it uh i'm just gonna say hey kyle larson denny hamlin martin truex jr three of the probably you know the top plays to dominate this race does that mean they're going to win the race as well maybe not um so i'm just gonna play all three uh if i had to pick you know a rank if i had to rank them and then i'll ask you too i'm gonna go with um Probably Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson. What are your thoughts? Agree. What are your th- is, I agree, like- but, but I'm leaning on Hamlin just because even though Truex is hands down the best driver here and has the best and is really good yeah. in this high horsepower, low downforce package, yeah. I just got to see him make it through a clean race. It's been it's been a struggle of late, as you said. Uh, so yeah, that'll be the top three. Uh, as we were talking about a little bit, Kurt Busch probably a fade. Yes, out. Uh, he he hung out there longer than I thought he would last week. Yeah, yeah, he has because it's you know last raw for Chip, and um, yeah, I could see why. Next up, Kevin Harvick. I'm torn here. Ninety one hundred. I'm going to let you talk to the people about Harvick because I have not made up my mind yet he's decent as yeah <laughs> it sounds like mega has it either <laughs> yeah it, it's it's a night yeah, race but i don't know he's you just when you think like oh this is a great situation yeah. it might be a kevin harvick track he he's much uh-huh. better in the the 750 packages in the 5 50 but he, he just hasn't like last week he was out there. He did lead some laps, I thought. And, yeah. you know, he, he looked good, good in that, that nice blue bush light car, but mm-hmm. I don't know. You, you got to think he's, he's probably on his way out. I mean, I haven't heard anything about retirement or anything for him. Like maybe last year, next year, assuming he's last year, but you got to think he's going to win at least one of these races, but I don't know if this is it. Yeah. I'm going to be low owned on Harvick if I have any shares. Next up, we have Joey Logano, uh, 10 7. Um, all I'm going to say, and I'll let you take it away because I believe you are higher on him than I. This is his, um, this is his package. Uh, this is what he loves to run. Uh, he loves short mile tracks. Uh, I'm in on Logano, but you seem to be much higher. Yeah, like he's just like top five after top five here. And this, this track he's really good in this this package um you know he ran well at um new hampshire he just i just really think that i'm going to pair him with um probably hamlin and Mm -hmm. i think those i I see that now yep those like pricing wise it, it works out really well um if i can squeeze the third dominator in i might try to but um there might be you know i'm really trying to get one guy that's in the 8k range is starting pretty deep in the pack and and that's that might be a struggle uh, i might have to not do that and might have to end up with um i don't think i can get up to larson but uh, like a Hamlin, Truex, Logano. I really, you really want to try to have at least three of these playoff guys in your lineup, yep. um, and not named Kurt Busch or Michael McDowell. Um, <laughs> You're green. So, so I think you know, like or Ryan Blaney, who we're going to get to in a second too. He's he's absolutely he's um, another Penske car, and as we've always said. Logano is good on this type of track. Kozlowski yep. is good on the opposite side, but not really anymore because they've stripped all the resources away from him because he's going away from the team and he's never going to do anything again. And then you have Ryan Blaney, who's kind of the hybrid in the middle, but he's been horrible on this track. So, yeah, yeah there's so much going for Logano here. Um, I think, you know, he, he could possibly be in the top four in scoring. Um here I, I think he's he's got potential to maybe definitely 5x maybe even 6x um lead some laps I had so many good things so he's definitely one of my prime players for tomorrow 
in six races, uh, six of the last races at Richmond, he has four top fives, 238 laps led, uh, t- four top tens as well. Average finish of six, that is third best in the field. So Joey Logano certainly set up well here. Um, moving on to his teammate, Brad Keselowski. We just talked uh, about all of them. Yeah. They're all uh, seven together. Seventh is a little too high for me. I'm probably out with his volatility. I would understand the play, though. He has decent history here. But uh, much like uh, Mega would always say, yeah, you got good history. You've been running for 25 years. So uh, I'll take those words out of Mega's mouth and keep it rolling into Blaney. Uh Uh-oh, we already talked about Blaney. He is a fade, massive fade, uh, out completely, uh, excluded from my pool. Next up, we have, I think, a very interesting play. Because it's you're gonna need to have you know value 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 in weird spaces, and I think Almirola might be a decent GPP play tomorrow. Well, a comparable track here is New Hampshire, which he won, which was kind of lucky because all the Gibbs cars wiped out on the first rack or a couple of laps in the rain, but he still seemed to be strong. I mean, it was a long race, and he did stay out front um i wouldn't necessarily say dominated the race but they're bringing back his car that they used there i was gonna say i was gonna say that so i'm glad you did and that's what makes it an interesting play for me he also has some pretty decent history as well almirola has an average finish of 12 six races with one top five and three top tens uh you know he is starting pretty high uh for you know, ninth place. If he could stay inside the top 14, I think 7,500 with the, with the finishing position, maybe some laps led. And then there's the, always the upside of, Hey, maybe finishes in the top five late in the race. I like this play. I, I don't think it's a play you can go overweight on, but I think if you want to get, you know, creative in a, you know, big one of the, in, in the $15 feature, if you're looking for a low on play, I think Almirola might be a decent one. Yeah, the one thing that I think he has going for him is he ran a pretty clean race last week. And a lot of guys, this is the second race in the first three races for right. round one of the playoffs. And I think he's got a decent shot to advance. So, you know, I, th- I think he's got a lot of incentive to stay up here and to, um, to do well. You've got some other guys that are going to be pressing because they're a little bit behind the eight ball after their first, um, you know, performance. Correct. And so we get on to the next play, and that's Christopher Bell at 9,600. So I kind of feel like Almirola and Bell might be some of the similar play. And one of them is extremely expensive and the other one's not. So 9,600, I think is a little too much for Christopher Bell. I'd rather just pay, you know, 600 more for Martin Truex Jr. and be done with it. I I really like Bell here. I I like the style of the track. I like the pricing and I like the um, place differential upside. So I I think that, you know, if I could find the 96 Uh, but again like with the roster construction i mean he would have to be my third guy with hamlin and logano and i i might might do that in some lineups just instead of playing another 10k guy it saves me a little bit it might make the difference between like we're already we'll get to it eventually but it could be the difference between like a bubble wallace and daniel suarez that's fair I think that's fair. And in that case, I would, you know, probably switch to Bell. Uh, 2v2 change and not a whole roster flip-flop. And I think, uh, you know, you could sell me on that. Next up, we have Tyler Reddick starting 11th, 7,900. I think this play is intriguing. I'd rather play Almirola. I I think Reddick is destined for somewhere in between, like, 14th to, like, 18th finishing position. Um. 7,900 is just a little too expensive. Yeah, he's right on the bubble, too. He's he's right on the 12th place right now to advance. Um, I think he's out. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. I think he's going to get bounced. 
<laughs> yeah, and like Al Almarola is just like one above him there. So, and below the line right now, you have Bowman, Kyle Bush, and Byron. So, uh, Michael McDowell, I think, is just we probably just eliminate him. I think he won Daytona. It's the only reason he got in the playoffs. And it's yeah. just a small team and not, you know, they're punching above their weight class. But, anyways, um, back to Reddick. Reddick. I think. Childress is a good team. I think they probably took all the resources away from, you know, Dylan here. Not that Dylan doesn't have any resources left. It's a, it's a very, very deep team. They're only running two cars in cups. So, you know, they're definitely, it's not like they're trying to like support like three or four, um, like in the past. I, I, I like it at 79. I think you can play them in cash, but I don't know. You're, you're probably looking at like about 25 DK points, maybe a ceiling of 30. So I think he definitely could stay within the top 15. I really, the nice thing is all the good cars are up here. Like who do you really see like down below, maybe a couple outliers, like maybe Stenthouse or Dylan can get up there, De Benedetto, but really I don't see many people displacing this top 15. Yeah. And you I have think the best drivers be... in starting in the top 15. I don't really see many of their peers here getting up and replacing them. And that's why I think I would have ownership just low on, on Reddick. But yeah, there's some other guys I'd rather play. I don't think that means that I won't play Reddick because of the reasons that you stated. Uh, we can carry on here on to Alex Bowman, 8,900. Um, so you have a Hendricks theory and we have three of them right here, Bowman, Elliot, and Byron. Um, just go ahead and tell me, is one stick out above the rest? Definitely Bowman. He would be the one that I'd cash 8,900. I think he's the safest one. I know he got banged up in some of the, um, it's like teammates took each other out there or whatever, but I think out of all of them, he has the most upside. I think Elliot is way too highly priced. And Byron, I think, um, experience-wise. Yeah, so I definitely agree with you. Chase Elliott is just way too expensive. I'd rather have Truex. I'd rather have Hamlin. I'd rather even have Kyle Larson. Uh, Chase, in his last six races, only has three top fives, but he only has 36 laps led. And we're going to need him to dominate some of this race to pay off that price tag. So um, going to be low-owned to the field on him. Um, next up, Bowman has a win here, only has 11 laps led. Uh, if he can, it looks like he's like a spike the top five or possibly win, or he's going to finish like 14th. So it's just kind of looks like his range of outcomes. But hey, a 14th place finish, pretty decent. And William Byron has some really bad uh, track history. Not really bad, but bad considering the, you know, the program he has at the 20 with the 24 in six races, he has four top twenties, only one top 10. I think that's disappointing for a 24 car. Yes. So um, that is, I mean, I'll have ownership of these three because they're some of the three best cars on the track, but it just looks like Hendricks looked for looking at another down performance tomorrow. All right. Moving on, we have Michael McDowell. You in on Michael McDowell? <laughs> if you can't, you, if you can't you tell by Kyle. the numerous. I skipped. Oh, I did. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Kyle Busch, two-time winner in the last six race, uh, races. Yes, in 11-5. Don't care. Yeah, way too high. And maybe DK priced them at 11.5 because they're giving him a cut of the money because he needs to rate 50K for his stupidity last week on the track. Who almost ran a couple people over down pit yep. road. That was something. Yep. <laughs> Yikes. I saw that replay. I was like, oh, yeah, he's getting fined. <laughs> 50K. I thought he'd lose playoff points. He's got, he got pretty lucky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was he, close. He, yeah, he, he's below the line, and I, I don't see him making up enough ground to – um. You you know, win I think race. he has to win one of the next two races, and I don't think that's that's going to happen. He could like, end up in the top one. ten, of course, but his, he's just been complaining about his car. And like we said, we, we 
his kryptonite is he's not he doesn't have practice he's one that needs to fine tune and dial the car in he's fine going in trucks he's fine going down into um xfinity and just like blowing away the lower competition and i think that helps him sometimes like get a feel for the track and be a little bit more successful in cup but he's not running anything this weekend besides cup and i'm out yeah uh looks like he's not going to get an opportunity to practice next week either at bristol i mean he could win some short tracks um you know he won at pocono that's not really it that was his only win this or no in the Daytona road course. Eh, Kansas. I don't know. Yeah, it's nothing really short track screams. You know, they probably have had a pretty terrible short track uh program this year. So I could understand um being out on Kyle Bush. I just think there is some upside here, even at his price tag at eleven five, because he's starting 15th. That would yeah. be my only time. GPP only, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, next up, we have Michael McDowell. You've mentioned numerous times to completely write him out. I agree. Uh, Ross Chastain, 7,200. I don't mind. 17th place. If he can finish inside the top 15, we're talking. So I don't mind. I don't mind Chastain. Pretty good driver. Yeah. He's impressive. Like, He's impressive. Like I, said, I, I fear with the Ganassi thing and like the team going away that they've thrown all the resources to Kurt Busch from this team. It's not That's like fair. the um, Childress one where I think they have multiple resources. I think they have more limited resources with Ganassi. So I don't know. I think yeah. he'll do okay. 17 is a little bit high. I prefer him to be like maybe 25th and work his way up. So I'm not complete fade. Um, but uh 72 i'd rather play like one of the 6k guys very fair moving on to austin oh chris busher uh starting 18th 7k uh has struggled of late this is not the chris busher i've i've known um, yeah he's starting too high here i i don't even see him breaking 20 dk points um yeah, it's I, weird because 18th, you would you would have locked that in early on in the year. Like, oh, this guy's finished. Yeah, but he would have been like 5'5". Five, five. He wouldn't have been 7K. Right, and that's the difference. Uh, he's not getting the same results. His price tag keeps growing. Uh, and I, I, I think he could always, you know, hey, Chris Buescher's pulled off some top 10s in his day. I just don't think Roush has any speed to compare to some of the playoff speed. But we're most of the – Bush you know and I, mean? Priest, I, I, I get up. confused. Like, I was, was it Priest, he or Priest was it Priest is... that like really did well at Homestead and it's like those that one and a half mile, like two mile yeah. track guy? Well, Busher is like the mile and a half guy. Like, okay. that is, he's one at Pocono. He's, he's got like that mile and a half. Okay. So th- this is not his style. No, this is a mile short track, hairpin turn corners. That's not his thing. Okay. No. No, thank you. All right. Moving on to Austin Dillon, 8,400. I've talked myself into Austin Dillon, looking over some of the history here. Uh, Austin Dillon has an average finish of 10th over the last six races, one top five, four top tens, and 56 laps led. I like that at 8,400. Sign me up. Yeah, he's not bad at flat tracks. Um, yeah. He, he's borderline cash, I think. So it's an Earnhardt weekend. We got Dale Jr. in the Xfinity race in the eight. Now we got to roll. We got to roll in with the uh, the number three car here. You yeah. have to. I'll, I'll give it to you. And like I said, he's one of the few drivers that I think can actually crack the top 15 based on who's already up there with the starting position. So, yeah, yes. I'd rather play this. I'd rather play Dylan over Reddick. Yes. And I think you're going to get lower ownership, too. Maybe. Yeah, that'll be tough. Um, next up, we have Ryan Priest, 5,800. I think the only reason you would play him is for price tag alone, but the position, as you are probably agreeing with and have talked me off of, is too high. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I want to play Priest. Th- 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 this is where, like, I think Busher should be, like, priced, too. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think they're almost like the same person sometimes. And that's why we have, Busher is yeah. like head, heads and shoulders, like with a team as a driver above Reese, but yeah, but just too much. 
in salary. I'm close to continuing with Priest in my like MME stuff, but man. Yeah, I like him on short tracks too. I don't think you're going to talk me off the Priest tomorrow, <laughs> but I won't have a lot of exposure. I think I'm going to have a smidge just in case, just in case. All right, next up we have Cole Custer here, 7,300. Uh, I like Custer. I've been getting home with him lately as a good value. His price tag start to go back up though. You know, and he struggled here like in Xfinity, so I'm yeah. not really interested in him here at 73. Uh, I think I'd rather take a shot at like Chastain at uh, for $100 less. Okay. Yeah, I can agree. I can or get like a, that. The, the next two guys, I'm saving like $400 and $600, and that could go a long way. I totally agree. Next up, we have Daniel Suarez, 6,900, track house racing. He has some decent history here. Um, not with the not with track house, but, you know, hey, an average finish of 16th in six races with two top 10s. Some of those races were in the Gaunt Brothers. So, you know, that's, that's fairly yeah. good. That's fairly good uh, finishing potential for 6,900. Starting twenty second, pick up eight eight spots, and you're in, and you're working. Yeah, like it. Wow, we are both on Suarez. This is not. This isn't going to go well. Uh, next up, we have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Sixty seven hundred. Uh, who's the better play, Suarez or Stenhouse? Uh, Stenhouse. I see Stenhouse potentially getting um, having a floor of like thirty DK points, where it's probably more twenty five. Okay. Uh, yeah, Stenhouse, um, pretty good on flat tracks, pretty good on speedways. Uh, he is a weird little hybrid um, when it comes to racing. I love the 47 car this week. Sign me up. Next up, we have Ryan Newman at 6K, uh, 24. I think this might be a little too high up. I like the price tag. That's about all I like. Yeah, he's GPP. I think he's going to be highly owned after like last week. He was pretty much the the darling for cheap value um, in which he did well. So that's why he's like 24th and not starting 34th. But I think we like him better when he's a little bit down more. But I, again, if he, if he's the guy that fits is the last guy in your lineup, then I'm going to take him over priest. I'm going to take him over McDowell. So, yeah. Yeah. I could see that. You could, uh, you could convince me of that. Next up we have, um, Corey LaJoyce by our motorsports having a pretty good uh, season fin finale here. Um, 5,500. I can get behind that. I'm not making it a must, but I'm going to play some. Yeah. He's been running well and he's a decent punt. I wouldn't expect anything more than 20 DK points. Uh, and I think that's right. the ceiling. Um, you're probably looking at like 15 to 17. Um, you're not going to get the four X I'm looking at, but for 55, he's much better than probably Haley or Alfredo or any of the 4K guys. So, Perfect. Yep. Uh, perfectly said. Next up, we have Chase Briscoe, 6,500. I think he will be my highest owned value play tomorrow. Yeah, there's a lot of upside there, definitely. Yeah, 26 starting position. Uh, the price tag is sweet, 65. His only finish in the Cup Series was 22nd. Um, man, yeah, I think I'm going to be in on Briscoe because I'd rather play him over the next guy, and that is Bubba Wallace. Uh, Bubba does not appear to have any kind of good history here. In the last six races, uh, Bubba Wallace has one top 20 with an average finish of 23rd. So uh, consider me on the Briscoe bandwagon and off the Wallace bandwagon. I don't mind Wallace. I mean, he's a better car now. He was in the Cheerio car before. So, uh, and if we really like Hamlin and the Gibbs one, it's pretty much a subsidiary of them. So, True. And, and here's the thing with Bubba Wallace, and we said the same thing if you watch the Xfinity video of Tommy Joe Martin, and you find it all the time in DS tests. People have been playing Bubba Wallace over and over and over again, and he hasn't worked out. 
and they know he's on the brink and that one day he is going to be in the perfect lineup. So they're going to continue to play him because they fear the day that they don't play him is the day that he's going to help win him the money. So, mm-hmm. and you see that all the time. Like you, like McKinley and I talk about in baseball, like, you know, he's, we will play a player over and over and over again. And just because like today's going to be the day, today's going to be the day, today's going to be the day. Yeah. And, and I hate that in baseball. Yeah, that happens I, I all hope, the time. you know, you, you hope it actually comes. And like, that's yeah. why I think Bubba is going to be highly owned and popular here is because people have played him so much this season that they feel he owes them, which note to everybody, no, major league or professional <laughs> athlete or driver owes you anything <laughs> no they don't yeah so. um you you get those crazy you know quacks on twitter that are adding the players and yelling at them it's just that's a mess that's a mess um all right now we come to the hardest decision of yeah this. yeah <laughs> that's how i was like how do i want to word this i feel like there's two separate roster constructions tomorrow there's one with Matt DiBenedetto, and there's one without Matt DiBenedetto. Uh, DiBenedetto, 8,100, starting 28th. He has about a, like, top 20, top 17, you know, worthy car. He's going to get place differential. The only problem is um, you can't fit three dominators or, you know, two dominators and then a really good, you know, playoff driver up in the 9k 10k range with the benedetto unless you feel like playing someone that's going to get lapped 40 times tomorrow so it's 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 lineup do you do this in cash really is your lineup going to have that place differential with the benedetto or are you going to take the gamble with suarez and briscoe and guys like that in the 6k range ricky stenhouse are you going to try to take their upside with probably minus five points and is it going to equal to the same i don't know you know what are your thoughts again i'm torn here i think he's got top 15 upside if not he's one of the ones that can get up there a lot of place differential he's not going to lead laps but he's not like 10k so we looked at the guys in xfinity that we just did the video they were like all 10k down here you were like paying through the nose for place differential and i think 81 is definitely reasonable but he's kind of no man's land and like you said it causes you to have a much different build than the rest of the people will have or you're ending up with bottom feeders you're going to have huff and gase and balicki and mcleod in your lineup so flip a coin and hope something sticks to the wall yeah um I think I'm going to have, you know, a little bit of both uh, in high dollar strategies tomorrow, some with De Benedetto and some without. Next up, we have two guys here. Uh, I would consider better than anyone from 32 on back, Haley and Alfredo, but I don't think we're going to have either. No, I don't think either one are going to hit 3X, and I think maybe they're going to be 10 to maybe 13 DK points, not really interested in them. Possibly the last talking point of the slate, Eric Jones, 6,600. Um, certainly going to get a little bit more place differential, but I don't think you have a better car when comparing him to Briscoe and Suarez. No, I, I think he could get maybe 30 DK points, which would even 25 still put you at 4X. So, I mean, that's not bad at 66. You know, he can get 10 place differential points. So, um. I, th- I think he's in the the discussion here, uh, but you know when you put him up against like Briscoe and and Wallace and Stenthouse and Suarez, like you're, you're automatically helpful. getting ten place differential potential points. So I think he's yeah, I think he's gonna top out around like twenty seven, twenty six as far as finishing position. And I don't think that's enough. I think 66 is just a little bit too expensive. If he was around like 6K, if Newman and, uh, you know, Eric Jones, if their salaries were swapped, I'd have a lot more interest in Eric Jones. But no thanks. Well, not no thanks, but low ownership for me. I'm not a a Richard Petty fan. I think we all know this now. All right, moving on to... 
uh, Josh Blicky, Joey Gase, Quinn Huff, Garrett Smithley. Your thoughts? Um, well, we skipped BJ McLeod, who's probably the best of them, but not really. <laughs> oh, so top I, 10. I, I think McLeod. you're looking at eight to 12 points in any of these guys. So if for a punt, I mean, they should hopefully finish the race, but they're probably going to be laps down. Smith Lee's not even on DK, so you can't even play him. <laughs> he, he, he is um, – Cody Ware inhaled too much carbon monoxide last week, so oh, he's definitely. out this week. So, again, we hope he's okay. Um, I don't know if they'll throw Smith Lee into the, the pool – I don't know if I'd want to play him if he did, but JJ Yaley starting dead last does make a little bit of sense at 5,300 because he is one that could probably get into the top 30, probably get seven place to fresh on points and he can lose you nothing for 53. Yeah. So, you know, I would, I think he finishes like 30th and I think that'd be fine. Right. Corey LaJoy for 200 more dollars might be a better play. But Agreed. I think for safety wise, Yaley has he can't lose you anything. So you're not going to okay. take his. You're not getting a negative points for him, and you, okay. you, it's impossible even to get a zero for him because the DK scoring system is based on forty cars. So you're definitely guaranteed at least four points, I believe it is. Yep. J- just by starting him. Mm-hmm. So JJ Yaley just starting the race and parking the car gets you four points. Yep. Yeah. They'll get paid out for 37 plus those four. So, yeah, I, I think, and I even think he can finish ahead of the five cars in front of him. you know, McLeod on back to Smithley. Yeah. I think Yaley can, I think he could, if he could realistically finish ahead of all those cars, finish ahead of a couple, you know, damaged cars that wreck out. I mean, if he can finish inside the top, 30 28 there he's at value boom and probably, and probably outscores the joy unless the joy does what he's done all year and finish inside the top you know 25 which is possible too so i think that will wrap things up for the driver by driver breakdown mega any last things to add no, I, th- I think, again, it's a nice slate because there's nothing where, like, we hate those slates where somebody qualifies really poorly or something and they're going to end up, like, 34 starting position at, like, and they're going to be, like, massive chalk. The best drivers, probably the best at least dozen drivers are up top. And yep. so try to get three of them in your lineup and then look at some of the value guys we talked about. Um, probably around in the 6K range. You probably don't need to dot, dip down into the fives. And then see if you can get bet, do you bend it all in. If you, if you can, you might have leverage because other people might just overlook him like we did when we tried our initial builds and said, this just isn't going to work. We're going to fade him. Yep, I think you nailed it. All right, guys, thank you for listening in on this video and the Xfinity video. Like both of those, comment below with any questions that you may have. And if you would like to get into the Discord channel, uh, you can find that link in our uh, Twitter bio at FSI underscore DFS. And you can follow me on Twitter at TKNation47. That is Megarola31. Thank you for listening. And everyone enjoy your night.